Hello, welcome back to episode 34 of the Alex Steele Show. It's fantastic to have you here in the workshop. Sam is missing, we can't find him. That's all right. He found a dog on the side of the road. He had to go to a vet to, to give it back and something like that. But anyway, we got the students from the March Evo class here in the workshop as the, uh, as the audience. And they're being wonderfully... Uh... That was very quiet. Anyway, they're here in the workshop. There we go. They're here in the workshop, so it's great. Had some good pizza, had a fantastic dev class, really productive. We even ended up making a hot cut hardy. So I'm very pleased with how today's gone. On today's episode, we're gonna be making a, uh, as, as you'll see from the title, a crazy, and I dare say crazy, little uh, kind of feather bottle opener, quite similar to this. This is gonna be a lot of fun. One of the students saw that on the wall, wanted to see how I made it, and so I thought, well, hey, there we go, right there, right there. And so I thought, wait, this would be a great live show. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. I'm gonna go quickly have a check, make sure we're all good over here. Great to see you all. Hello, Adam, Dave, Stefan, Keegan, Mean Sartin, Lisa, Carl, Dave, Honore, Gary, and Channel 67. How are we all doing? Fantastic to have you here. This is gonna be a lot of fun. You ready? You ready? You guys ready? Yeah. Great. So, I've got a piece of uh, three quarter by six, <laughs> metric and imperial. I'm gonna put a little taper on here. Fix that twist. So, <laughs> For those that don't want to speak both metric and imperial at the same time, this is three quarter by quarter, or a 20 by six flat stop. I'm gonna put a little one-sided taper on it. Taking my time. Kind of judge the proportions that I'm gonna want for this piece. I'm keeping it same thickness most of the way down, as best I can. I want that thickness there. So when we get to the fullering, it, uh, it, it, it gets accentuated as, uh, as much as we quite like. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna take, oh, how much material am I gonna take? How much parent stock? I think I'm gonna take about two cubes. So, uh, you know, maybe about 40 millimeters. Come over the far edge of the anvil and make a little mark. And now I'm gonna go back to the forge, heat it up. And we're going to draw that out and isolate what will be the, uh, what will be the, oh, I dropped it. That's smart. Oh, hey, the Alex Steele drinking game has started early. If you're new to the channel, you might not know. There is a game that people have started, which is the Alex Steele drinking game. I drop things very regularly. And, and so every time I drop something, you're welcome to take a drink. I recommend orange juice or, uh, if you're very daring, apple juice. But that's a stretch. It can be awfully, like me, a little too sweet. Orange juice or apple juice, I mean, I, I hear certain people like, uh, like other kinds of beverages. I wouldn't have a clue. Every time I drop something, you drink. It's great. Uh, it then means that lots of people leave wonderfully stupid comments, which is, which is what it's all about. It's all about a good bit of fun. So what I was talking about there is that one piece that I'm isolating is I'm gonna be isolating this stem here from the mass that becomes the leaf. So I'm gonna bring this down and work this down. And I'm in fact gonna be creating a two-sided taper. So not only am I gonna be isolating it over the far edge of the anvil, I'm also going to be turning it 180 degrees and coming to the near edge of the anvil, creating a thinned down section right here for the stem before that transition into the bottle opener. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull pull my material out of the fire right now. Fire is really nice and warm, and I'm going to work over the far edge of the anvil. Then I'm going to come to the near edge of the anvil. I don't need a lot of material. I'm going to take uh, ooh, maybe another half a cube from where the forging starts and stops. And I actually think that was too much material. Proportionally, I might have an issue with that. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Bring it back down to plane. Check it back. Of course, this is very much gonna be a stylized feather. As I, uh, as I make this feather, I'm gonna be drawing on uh, various techniques from different blacksmiths whose, uh, whose work and design styles I admire and, and enjoy recreating in little small projects like this. You'll hear me na mentioning names like Brazil and Farham 
a lot when I do these live shows. I, I, I just have a great appreciation of the, of the, of the smaller scale design work that they do, making, making wonderful kind of trinkets and, and things like this. And so I'm gonna be enjoying putting some of that to use in this design, as well as, uh, as, well as whatever, as, as well as whatever, whatever creative thoughts I might have as I go through the process. So if you've just joined the live stream, we're gonna be making a crazy feather. Crazy feather, I guess, a very crazy lead. And uh, right now we're on, uh, what do you just do, day three of the March Evolution and Toolmaking class here at the workshop, which has been going fantastically. Uh, you guys have been making great progress. You've been moving through it really fast. Very pleased with all of that. Really, really very pleased with all of that. In fact, they've been moving through too fast. You guys are accomplishing too much. Which, is that really a problem? Not really. It's, it's a very good problem to have. Very good problem to have. So they, in fact, made a hock at Hardy today, uh, which is the first time. Well, thank you very much, Jay, uh, Dave. I really appreciate the little donation there. Very, very kind. Yep, Sam is not here on this stream. Very sorry to say, ladies and gentlemen. He, uh, he was rescuing dogs today. Rescuing dogs. He is a, he's, a real, he's a real soldier, eh? He said he wanted to keep it. But, uh, Yeah, absolutely. Once the stream's done, you can always always watch it back. Are we ready? I'm gonna take a really interesting tool right now. I've already lost it, haven't I? No, I have. I'm gonna take a really interesting tool right now, and you can see what that is right now. Right now? Yeah, now. So right now, what you can see is this is two fullers and a swage. Two fullers side by side. I mean, essentially, it's made like a fuller except you then put a fuller in the middle, you get like a fruge swage. Uh, there's a combination of a fuller and a swage. Uh, for clarification, context, if you're not familiar, this is a fuller, it's essentially a tool that has a rounded end of, uh, of varying uh, different radii, different thicknesses, and you know, you can achieve different things with it. Here, that's essentially two stacked together and a hollow. This is gonna be really interesting uh, for what we're gonna do right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out, and along that one edge, Along this one edge right here, I'm going to be running this tool, creating a false, false vein. I don't need it to be super hot. I'm just trying to lay this, lay this out and, and get set where I want to go. I'm going to start kind of right about where my transition is. Start with a light, light, light touch. And I'm gonna just slowly, ever so slowly, ever so gently, work my way up the workpiece. And so this is, uh, this is something I saw Tharam make, this tool. Again, Jacob Tharam, Tharam Forge on Instagram. And uh, it's very interesting to play with. I'm going to run this all the way up, creating a little vein right up towards the tip there. Now, when I was deciding which side to put the taper, I was trying to factor in the way that all the different work I'd be doing to it would make it move. What I know is as I work on that far side, it's going to be bending it over this way. What I also know is as I then fuller on the edges, it's gonna be bending it back this way. So it was a, a little bit of a zero sum game, but I ended up pushing it over on that side anyway, um, leaving it flat here. I think I want the curve to be going in that direction. We'll see how that goes in a little while. So now what I'm gonna do on the very next heat, the very next heat, is we're going to be going a little deeper in that, but I don't wanna go too deep, because I don't wanna go too far too fast. If I go too far too fast, I then run into the issue of going in with my fullers and having too big of a cavity that then when you go in with the fuller, you're folding over material, creating a cold chat, and that's not good. A cold chat, if you're unfamiliar, it's where you, uh, it's where you essentially are folding a piece of steel, a small sliver of steel, over onto itself without it being welded, um, which is an issue. You know, a really good etiquette thing, guys, is when it's your own show, you turn off your phone. So I apologize for that. My phone going off in the middle of my own show. Hey ho, hey ho. 
My bad. That was me. Nice and hot. Man, the forge is toasty today. Give that a little brush. Especially as we're using, uh, using fullers like this. It really would like to get all the scale clogged up in that. Oh, Captain. Uh... There we go. Now I'm going to run this up the vein again. And as I get to the tip here, I'm going to do one more pass. And I think that'll, uh, that'll conclude the work I do on just for now as I then lay out the rest of what I'm going to do to this stylized feather. I really hope you're enjoying this. And a few minutes here, I'll pop over and, and scan through some comments. Love to hear how you're all doing. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to put that back in the fire. And I'm going to adjust the exposure on this camera here. Pull that down a little bit. Move that in. See if we can get you a little bit of a better vantage point. There we go. And we're back. So I'm going to start off with a farm fuller and then I'm going to have a very large fuller that is hot as can be. A very large fuller on hand too. Do a little more talking to myself. I have lost that other fuller. Where did I put it? Uh oh. Okay, I'm going to run over here, find the tool I was looking for. There we go, I got it. Wonderful. See if we can lay out, lay out our forging a little bit. Again, this is this is way hotter than it needs to be. What I'm trying to do at this stage is uh, is lay it out. So I'm going to come in with the flat of this tool, uh, about three eighths of an inch up. And I'm starting at almost 90 degrees to, uh, to the vein. However, oh, not quite close enough. However, with every set that I do, I'm going to be changing my angle up like this until I'm almost parallel. I'm moving up about ah, five, five sixteenths, you know, close to three eighths of an inch with each, uh, with each set here. And now after those three, I'm gonna see if I can do something a little different. I'm gonna see if I can lay a thick fuller in instead. Again, change the angle. And laying it out of these cold temperatures can be extremely useful. Extremely useful to lay it out of the cold temperatures. I'm able to see what I'm doing. And of course, since it's a little cooler, we can be a little more precise with, uh, with what happens with each blow. Which means, hey, you know, maybe we're going to mitigate against the risk of, uh, of making a mistake so early on in the, uh, in the process. And I'm going to take a slightly thinner footler and go up next to it. Again, changing my angle. And what I'm now going to do is I'm now gonna take a heat and I'm gonna work all this. There's no point in marking out the rest because by the time I get up to here next heat, it's gonna be cold anyway and it's gonna be the perfect timing for me to mark out the rest. You can see what I've gone is I've done three sets of farm fullers, large fuller, farm fuller, thin fuller. And the farm fuller, if you're not familiar, I've, I've used it a lot on this show. Just, it's a great opportunity for me to experiment with it and play with the, the nice forms it make. Is this, it's almost like a, almost to a certain degree like a, like, a, like a fingernail kind of you know, poke in there. It's rounded on the bottom. It's rounded across here on the side, but straight down here, forming almost, uh, almost a butcher edge. It's a nice, nice bit of kit. I do like it. Anyway, I promise I'm going to read some comments real fast. Alex Petri, Alex, does the size of the hammer matter? Um, it rates the hammer to the work and what you feel comfortable with for the work that you want to do and the pace at which you want to work. 
So Alec, what's up with the filthy mullet? <laughs> That's a funny one. Golly, Will, Will Stelter's getting a sugar rush from all the apple juice he's drinking. That is, that is a dangerous thing. I hope, you, I hope you're all right there. 1,083, 1,087 people watching. That is utterly astounding. Now, I, when, when we started this, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I'm, I'm going to be very proud of this for a long time. When we started this, first show, 70 people watched, 60 people. I don't know, I always make up a different number for some reason between 50 and 70. But it was a very small number in the realm of between 50 and 70. So, I'll run back to number two. And that was back in July. And what an exciting thing that now, not such a long time after, 1,080 people. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry, I said that as if I was signing out. I'm not signing out. Don't worry. We're just getting started here today. Working on this crazy feather. Crazy feather. Stylized feather form. Utilizing some... Uh, some farm inspired techniques, Brazil inspired techniques. There's my thick fuller. I'm gonna go in with my thin fuller here. A little too aggressive right there. What can happen when you're using that and it's getting, and it's getting a, a, little, uh, a little cool is if you get a little too aggressive while it's a little too cool, you can take just a little corner of it out of there It'll be all right. Eventually, a number of those corners will come out, but I prefer that was happening a little, a little later on uh, than right here in the beginning of, uh, of doing the forging. It means that it's getting a little weak in there, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. You know, I am right now, as I said, I'm going to lay this out. So I just did a thick fuller. I'm going to go in again with a farm fuller after it. I think I might just only be able to fit one. And then we're going to go with a slightly thinner fuller. Again, changing our angles with every blow. And I'm going to get really confused with my tool organization here in a minute as I have all sorts of different tools laying up on my anvil. I'm going to go ahead and run back in the fire. Grab some more water. And yeah, yeah, this is a fun form, fun form. I'm making it differently to how I made this. Um, in terms of the organization of the fuller lines, it's gonna be interesting to see how this turns out. And I'm in fact wondering as I look at this whether I had the same amount of material for this one. I might have taken some wider stock. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out when I keep forging it. See if it moves much more. It certainly looks a lot narrower indeed. So, farm and at the back. Boom. Now it's set. I can go a little faster. Those angles do keep changing. Boom. Thickest fuller. Far and fuller. Oxidizing. Give it a brush. There we go. And then again, that's where that crack was. And then I'm going to go to my medium fuller. Probably could have brushed it or should have brushed it right about there. And then back to a farm fuller. And then back to my slightly smaller medium fuller. That's starting to look pretty interesting. It's starting to look pretty crazy. What do you reckon, Ollie? It's starting to look pretty interesting. Just playing with the different tools. But again, I think it's important to stress not too far, too fast. And on that note of not too far, too fast, before I go too deep in here, I'm going to run back down the central vein and redefine it. As you can see in there, I'm kind of losing a little bit of that definition. I'm kind of just chopping in. So I'm going to go run back into the fire, go wide. And the, the, the forge is, is quite hot right now. I'm actually going to knock down the regulator a little bit. These burners like a higher pressure. Knock down the regulator a little bit, take some of that pressure off. Try and see if I can keep the fire a little cooler. Oh, 
when it's cooler, save it getting up to the high, high, high temperatures that it's wanting to get up to and uh, save a little bit of oxidation. I've lost that one too, I found it. Okay, which side is which? Boom, there we go. So now we'll run this back through. It seems I've got to be relatively forceful with it. Despite the fact that I'm just shining it up. Okay. Get rid of some of that scale. and run my fuller all the way down. That is starting to look nice and clean. I'm enjoying this. This is gonna be a very interesting piece. At these lower temperatures, I'm gonna see what I can do in regards to taking this vein and running it back down the stem. Now I'm gonna call this a little bit of a experimental tapping right now. I don't know how, how well this can blend in. I'm using this front edge of my tool, so I'm not, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm watching what's happening is I'm, I'm peeking over from this side here, and I can only be really be looking at the front edge. I don't want to have my, my back edge down on the material where I can't spot it. So I'm just going to keep, keep trying to lead that front edge, edge it back in. I think this will be interesting. I think I'll have, uh, I'll give it a little bit of, uh, a little bit of intrigue. Awesome. So now as this cools, I'm gonna see what I can do right up here on this right hand side. I think the farm fullers probably won't go in there all too well. I think instead, I believe that's my thinnest fuller. Do I have an intermediary size? Yes, I have a slightly thinner fuller, but I'm not gonna be able to spot that it's thinner, so I'm gonna go straight to my thinnest fuller. See, it's got a little bend in there. Ideally, I'd just throw, I'm gonna throw a block of wood up. I think, uh, save. Okay, I don't have a block of wood. Oh well. Okay, this is not work, yes. Give it, there we go. Thank you. I did not hit myself in the face live on air at all. I was very close. So this is straight. I didn't. I wasn't being sarcastic. I almost did. It came up pretty high when I hit it there. And lay these marks out right here. So I was, I don't know how many degrees that is. 30 degrees off the spine. Now I'm gonna get even, clo even closer to that, uh, to that stem there. Stem type thing. And then almost parallel. Oh, ever so slightly off parallel. Right in here. Very subtle, the angle changes as we move down the piece. But I think that's important to, uh, to recreating good aesthetic. There we go, Ollie. Kind of look pretty interesting. So again, I want to make sure I'm not getting it too hot. I can take some of the, uh, pull some of the air intake down on my, on my choke. Oh, there we go. Pull some of that air intake down. Fantastic. Let me read some comments. How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Guys, thank you for the lovely donation. Some of you have been jumping in here. I do appreciate that. Very, very kind. Everybody wants another live show with Sam. That's very funny. <laughs> Outstanding. This is this is this is fun. Just fantastic. It's great to have you guys all here. Okay. Try 
fish some of that oxidation out of there. Good brush to have. Oh, wrong screen. Chase this back. I need a little more heat to uh, start moving it, especially right in here at that transition. I didn't think about how I would do this soon enough. I should have probably started gently, uh, gently teasing this uh, this transition into it a little earlier. That's okay. Start working, uh, start working it down a little more power. These low temperatures are lovely for creating a really, really nice finish on the workpiece. The key is going to be after this, really trying to make sure that my work is done below a high yellow to maintain some of the, uh, the crispness that forging like this, forging these parts like this has given me. So that's going to be important a little later on. For now, I think it's going to be a matter of one more heat through every single mark. Hopefully none of them are thin enough that we break anything. But I think that one more heat through all the marks is going to mean that uh, we can then start laying out our hole, punching our hole, and forging the bottle opener. There we go. It's starting to look pretty cool. Fun little project. Fun little project. Do you guys have any questions? You're good? Right. A little later in the show, we're going to be making s'mores. S'mores. Like, how do you pronounce it exactly? S'mores? We're going to be making some mores. Some s'mores. There we go. I was given a very quick introduction earlier on and I think, I think I'm ready to share my small making skills with the world. It's gonna be very exciting, very exciting. The training was rigorous. It, was, it, it took a long time to, uh, to train for this. Lots of mental courage, physical exertion. But I think I know how to make some s'mores. And it'll all be because of our wonderful American visitor. I seem to be doing pretty well. I haven't dropped a lot, so I apologize for those of you playing the Alex Seal drinking game. You are probably not getting as trashed as you usually get. So, it's great for me. But I'm sorry. Hey, next time maybe we'll drop some more things. Maybe we'll have a drop-a-thon next time. How about that? Okay, next fella. See, I have this entire pile of hand tools right here. And I'm losing track. I have no idea which one my next one is. I think it is this. Yep. And then onto the very thinnest thin of fillers for the last two marks. Nice. Pleased with that. I can now take this. I'm going to run it from the very, very base. Not necessarily the lightest blows in the world, not necessarily the hardest. What I am doing, however, is I'm bearing down with my left hand, trying to make sure that that tool does not slip out of there, but also trying to make sure that I get a kind of controlled feed rate with it. Hopefully clean that up a little bit. There we go. I'm quite pleased with that. Eventually, later on, this will get some sort of like decorative bend to it. Um, for now, however, knowing, anticipating this is about to be held in tongs, I don't want to don't want to worry about the bends too much. It's gonna. It'll, I'll sort that out later. But there is the uh, there is the feather-like shape as it stands. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear off this enormous pile of tools. Set this over here. 
and next heat we're going to be taking a slot punch and we're going to be punching a hole. Ideally I'd lay out the hole at this temperature. I think, I dare say I think the punch might have been, uh, might have been, might have lost a little bit of its temper. I have no idea how. I mean it was right in my tool racks where I left it of course. That wouldn't be fair for me to not tease you guys about that. Okay, so it's, it's got a little color in it. It doesn't look like it. I can go ahead and run that to this shot right here. It doesn't look like it, but it has a little bit of color in it. So that's going to tilt it up on that diagonal furthest away from me. Get a tiny little spot in there. Then I can rock it back. This is a really easy way to line it up for square. Okay, marked out. Now this goes back in the fire. And I want to punch a hole. I want to punch the hole this heat, drift the hole in the next heat, cut it off the next heat because I don't want that oxidizing. Um, and that's, that's what's going to happen. You know, This is one of the good things about a cook forge or a coal forge is if I wanted to heat that, I wouldn't have to heat the rest. However, now I've got a gas forge. If I poke that all in the fire, it's all getting hot. There's no way for me to have a small selective heat um, unless I heat up uh, 15 inches of material by poking it the entire way through. Obviously, that's counterproductive. You know, so you see, I heat it up, the entire thing's hot. Problematic because it will oxidize uh, the leaf that we spent so much time carefully forming. Okay, okay. How are we, YouTube commenters? Hello, hello, hello. Goodness, you guys are you guys are killing it in here. So many comments. So many comments. Okay, I there are so many that I'm finding it even difficult to read. Dare you to forge left-handed 7K, that is the worst idea ever. That would be just absolutely terrible. He wants me to forge left-handed. Every time it is hot, I'm gonna take the opportunity to brush this. Don't worry about that so much. I'm about to be hammering on it. Give that one hard blow, boom. Switch you over. Another hard blow. I'm down to the anvil. I'm gonna flip it over. Check it back with one blow. Come in here again, medium blow. Feel it stick. You know you're at the bottom of the anvil. And there's a little bullseye. Super easy for us to line that up with our punch and uh, hopefully he says punch out a plug really easy you know if you're new to this go ahead and, you know again tilt up tilt back make sure you're perfectly in line um, if you're a little familiar with punching holes usually you'll just set it right on there and you're usually just gonna go for it and you'll get pretty close to lining that plug up perfectly again then flip it over have a look and it's, it's gonna be fine and I might get the plug out this blow I did. No, I didn't. Ah, well, that's terrible. Okay, that's it. I'm putting, taking the, I'm, I'm going. I didn't get the plug out. In fact, it, it's actually not a big deal at all. What you'll see is the plug has folded over into this side wall here. I didn't line it up. Too cocky. Too sure of myself, eh? Terrible. So I'm gonna just see if it will bend. Perfect, perfect. It took just the slightest amount of pressure and I was able to move the plug. So I know it's hanging on there by just a small, tiny little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat my Leatherman wonderfully. Oh, that didn't work. Yeah, usually it just pokes out. I'm doing a terrible display here. Okay, I need a more slender drift that will fit in there. It just needs a slight poking. I don't want to be able to not have it fall to the ground and get lost. But I come over to... Okay. It disappears. Oh, I think I found it. I have indeed found it. So it came out with just a little tap. Wait, have I lost it? Shoot. Okay. I think it's gone. Well, so much for that. Huh. 
Yeah, I lost it. Have you spotted it? No, there's just scale. That's it. Oh well, so much for that explanation. Basically what happened is, is I came down from one side, I then came down to the other side a little off, which meant that it hung on from one corner, punched out, that bent up, took the drift, knocked it back, and it fell out with just a, enough force to basically open the hole enough that it'll just drop right out. And then it was a little bent and it was on the ground and I tried to pick it up and I, I can't find it. It's kind of worried whether it had fallen through this hole in my glove and I was about to lift my hand up and have it then <laughs> land on my finger and burn me. Okay, so I'm gonna put this drifting plate up. We're gonna switch it around to here, correct? That's my 16 millimeter hole. What I'm also going to do, just for you guys, look at that, the uh, no holes barred. And, uh, and yeah, there we go. We're going to be drifting a hole. 1,300, oh my goodness, 1,317 people watching. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, fun. I'm now going to be drifting the hole here over this uh, little bolster plate. Again, taking the opportunity to come in here and where it's critical, brush off most of the oxidation. It might mean that I have to take multiple heats to drift this. I'm not worried about it. I'm more worried about not letting that scale get too serious. See that little black ring around there? That causes your issues. That's when you either break a hole or you, uh, you start damaging drifts. Um, not necessarily very easy to damage a thick hole drift like this. But when you get into the smaller drifts, uh, if you're not observing the temperature of your hole, you drive the drift, you then end up with bent drifts, and none of us would know anything about that, would we? No, no. those tongs, they just, the hole opens right up. Really soft steel, being sarcastic. Being sarcastic, inside jokes. Not necessarily that inside jokes. Give it another brush. Boom, then I'm gonna go to the other side of the hole to go. Now I'm going to cut it off on a hot party. I don't know how well you're going to see this. I did not plan smart enough for this. But I'm cutting it off on a hot cut hardy on one of my striking anvils just down here in front right there. Lining it up. Make sure I'm where I want to be. Oh, it's getting a little chilly there. And this is one of the great things about blacksmithing is when you say, it's getting a little chilly. It's still like 600 degrees Celsius. Okay, break this off. If there's any rag there, I'd rasp it off. I have a little bit of rag on the end of my cut there. Just from just, oh. <laughs> Sorry. I have a little bit of rag here on the end of my cut. I'm not quite lining things up perfectly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly run it to the vise and give it a, uh, give it a little rasping. Farrier's rasp. Okay. I bet I covered up the camera the entire way because I was actually using an angle grinder secretly pretending it was a rock. And now with this, we're going to go back in the fire. And now, thankfully, I don't have to put the leaf end in the fire. What I do have to be cautious about is damaging all of this with my tongs. Bear that in mind. Uh, one thing I can do, if I spot any cardboard... Uh, would you look at that? We've got a pizza box. Yeah, I want a little rip, rip some of the cardboard off. Pretty handy that we have just eaten some great greasy pizza. Because what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to fold this and fold it again and rip it and soak it in some water. I'm 
and put it in the jaws of my tongs and then put a tongue clip on it and then tighten the jaws of my tongs over the piece. And it's been a while since I've done this, so this, oh, doesn't like, <laughs> this one doesn't like the water that much. There we go, maybe this will show you a little bit of what I'm doing. Put the cardboard over that in hopes of not marring up the, uh, the leaf too much there. So that's gonna go back in the fire. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch the anvil around so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. Bring that around there. And I'm not going to be working on the horn of the anvil. You're working on the horn of the anvil to draw this little ring out right here. And, uh, and that's good. It's, a, it's, it's nice because what it means is we can get some interesting textures in there. What you'll see on uh, the piece that I just dropped. And again, I have not moved this camera. Okay, let's sort the focus out. There we go. What you'll see on that piece that I've just dropped multiple times now, playing the Alex Steel drinking game, um, it's now time to drink. You'll see that this is on the diagonal here, and that's nice. It's a nice, it's a nice effect, and that's as a result of drawing this out. It also means that we have a nice consistent ring, more consistent than would otherwise be achieved with simply cutting and drifting. So now what I'm going to do, again, held in the cardboard with a tongue clip, smoke myself out with some steaming, smoking cardboard. Is I'm going to create a little ring. Can you see that there? Yeah, I'll do all my hand hammering there. And I want to first basically make a square cross section before we go to the diagonals. Change my grip over here. Once I have a square cross section, again, being careful this doesn't come out of the tongs. You know, you put the cardboard in there, you're, you're messing up the natural grip the tong wants to have. That sounds a little, uh, little fancy, the natural grip the tong wants to have. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the tongue has grooves in it that will accept uh, the vein quite nicely, actually. It would work quite well. Cardboard in there means that it's, it's not there, which means that, you know, am I going to have quite a secure grip? I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just see if I can pour a little more water on the, on the cardboard there. Explode the forge by pouring water near it. And then we're going to come back in here again. And I'm going to be working on the diagonal. I'm now going to take the round die of my hammer. I come all the way up here. I turn it upside down. This takes some funky gripping because of the bend in this. Then again, on the next diagonal, we're gonna work and come all the way up and then back. So if you're new to the video, what we're making is we're making a funky leaf, a crazy and funky leaf. We're using 20 by six flat mild steel bar. We've just forged the uh, just forged the, 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 not the leaf, we're making a feather. Oh, Lee, terrible. We've just forged the feather end, and we have just also punched and drifted out the, uh, the bottle opener end. We drifted it to 16 millimeters, and now what we're doing is we are forging over the horn of the anvil to enlarge this loop. And it's starting to get to a size that I quite like. We're gonna be shooting for 25 millimeters round, about an inch round, right? So I'm done on the horn for now. I'm gonna need to be over the holes and over the normal the anvil. And I don't like working in this configuration. I like having my holes over here so that I can have th tools in the hole and have access to it without hitting my hammer on the holes. I'm actually gonna leave this out of the fire for a second. Ah, for a second, as we get close to the completion. Again, just to avoid oxidizing it where it doesn't need to be oxidized. Spin this around. Now here's a top tip guys, if you ever make a portable anvil, don't make your portable anvil with lead inside the legs. Because I took what otherwise would be a really great little portable anvil and I made it, uh, I made it a little bit on the heavy side. So that there is the, uh, the top tip for today's live show. Sorry? I don't know, there's a lot of lead in it though. Um, you know, the stand would probably be 
40 pounds or so. The anvil is 100 pounds. I know with the stand, it's probably more like 200 and probably over 200 pounds with the lead in there. All of this is filled with lead and the stand is more than the anvil, basically. And that's a 51 kilogram anvil. This is a Brooks anvil. Um, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I'm not one for, I'm not one for really getting into anvils that much. I kind of want a flat surface and, uh, you know, if at all possible, a nice, nice round horn that goes to a good point. And that's about it. I'm not so worried about, you know, whether one anvil is harder than the other by one Rockwell point at all. Um, you know, I'm frequently working over a mild steel anvil for reasons, not just because, uh, because I can, but for actual reasons, such as safety when we're working with a striker. Um, but a mild steel anvil can indeed be quite functional for a first anvil. Quite, it can get your addiction for blacksmithing really, really going, which is always, which is always wonderful. Bloody hell, 1,400 people. Outstanding. How hard would it be to make it look like that on both sides of the feather? Sadly, I don't really think we could make it look like that on both sides of the feather. Um, unless we had it like a top and bottom tool. That'd be a tool that's striking from both the top and the bottom. Funnily enough, that's why it's called the top and bottom tool. It's amazing how those things work, isn't it? Language. Incredible. I need a sign that says laughter. <laughs> yeah, I need, to, I need to work on the soundboard of Karen's laughter here. There's actually nobody else in the workshop, I'm pretending these guys are here. No, no, I want to pretend you guys are here so that when you don't laugh, it then doesn't sound as bad. Yeah, good. One tip. Flip it over. Another tap. Lay that down to the side. I'm now going to come back into the middle of the angle. I'm going to take a ball from, uh, it's about a three-eighths ball. Three quarters on, quarter off. Drive. Take it out every time so that we can look and examine, see where we are. Bring that down to thickness. Let the sweat out of your eye because it's really warm in here. Starting to have nice weather here in England, which is incredible. We've had some nice days. Give that a wire brush, lovely. And now it's going to be on to forming the, uh, forming the aesthetics of the bottle opener. I believe, I'm trying to think about the best order to go here. I'm probably going to work all of this first, since I'm already gripping it with the tongs. And since I can hammer on most of this over on the horn, so I'm going to just put it back in the fire, move this around, make it aesthetically pleasing. I'm going to take a pair of scrolling tongs just to have on hand because they can be very useful. I'm also going to zoom out this camera just because I can anticipate. Oh, oh, ah, ooh. I can anticipate being a little bit, uh, it being a little bit of a scatter shot in regards to where I am on the anvil. So these are a pair of scrolling tongs. Uh, people will use them when they have a jig for scrolling and they want to hold on to it. They'll also use them when they just want to just tweak a small little bend, and that's what I'm going to be using for. They're radius, of course which means you can tweak small, tight bends without damaging said bend. So, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna come in here. I wanna, I wanna bend coming this way. So I'm levering, it, levering against it uh, with the tongs over here. You'll see they're actually bending and moving. The cardboard is, has officially given up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cool that down and hold it in tongue, in hand, until the heat comes back insufferably hot. None of my English is making sense today. Okay, there we go. I like that. Nice aggressive bend. Got a wire brush. Drink. Yeah, that's, that's the time you drink. And I'm going to go back in the firing. Back 
back in the fire again. Sorry? I saw what? Oh, I didn't see anything either. I just stretching, really. Stretching. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. That's what it's all about. Outstanding. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Amazing. Great. The most commonly said words. And two right. Could there be better words to say commonly? Nice. I like that. I think it's going to want a little bit of a bend in there. Great. Happy with that? What I'm now going to do, I'm going to move up to here. Back in the forge. How are we in YouTube land? Make ice cream some Damascus. What on earth is happening, guys? Is there, is there a riot going on in here? This is the most, most viewed day ever. 1,400 people. Outstanding. Max was 1,402. You guys are killing it. Thank you all for being here. A real pleasure. If you're new to the channel, up, oh, wrong, wrong page if you are new to the channel. Welcome, I do one of these things every week. It's a lot of fun, much more, much very informal. You basically just kind of hang around and, and make some fun stuff, really. And it is always a massive amount of fun. Here in the UK, we are, what time is it, 10 something? Okay. How about if I come there, cam it? There we go, that'll do it. Nice. That gets some really interesting shape into it. What that's doing is that's kind of making that ridge there in the middle, that stem stand up slightly. You're gonna have to do something to really work on the ergonomics though. So I'm now gonna hold it in this direction here. And we're gonna be probably hammering on the leaf over a wooden block, to get some shape in it. Hopefully make it something that's gonna be comfortable. Comfortable to hold in the hand. That's an important thing. We're making a bottle of now. It's got to be comfortable. Now again, I am uh, I'm putting the leaf in the fire. I do want to be cautious to not get that too hot. Feather. Thanks. Please just yell next time. Next time I say leaf. It looks like a feather. It looks like a leaf. It looks like both. Just yell at me. Just, Alec, it's a leaf. That was not intentional. <laughs> it's late, it's been a really long day. It's been a great day of class. That we have worked hard. I mean, you guys did most of the work. I kind of just said hit there, hit here, hit there. A little up this curve here. Coming in here with the round side of my hammer. Nice. I have smoke in my eyes. Ah, lots of smoke in my eyes. I quite like those aesthetics. What do you think, Ollie? You're the one that requested that. You think, it, you're kidding, you think it's fantastic? Wow. I think it's just fabulous. I mean, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's absolutely wonderful. Brilliant, if I, if I can say so myself. I don't, I don't say any of these words enough. I think I need to be more positive. Yeah. I think I'm a little too negative. It's a fantastic shame. Look at that little wire brush. Sorry. Amazingly fantastic. An amazingly fantastic shame. Yeah. I need to work on my positive words. Yep, yep. Absolutely. It's wonderful. I was instinctive. I said that instinctively. That is just very exciting. What a fun form. I'm not going to flip that around. I am also going to zoom you guys in. Run over here. So we can really make the most 
of what a pretty form this thing is turning out to have. Very fun. That was two. That was two in one. I dropped two things in one go. Grip that with a tong. And I have a metal splinter. Oh my goodness. Talk about a drama series. Not only are we getting people madly drunk all around the world, and metal splinters. There we go. So this is a Farrah's block brush. Pretty highly recommend getting one of these. Farrah's lighthouses have them. There we go. I'm going to pan you ladies and gentlemen up there. A little earthquake here in Bark Street Forge. Great. Now, that's too high. I'm doing a great job. Stam stole my, stole my fluid head for the day. This is what happens, Sam, when you, when you take the tripod and then find a dog on the side of the road. But, oh, I thought I just unplugged it. <laughs> or I almost actually just made my whole body fall to the ground. And I think that's like five shots if I trip over and fall on a live show. There we go. There is. My instinct is to say Damascus because I make so many Damascus things. But here is a feather. Stylized feather using a Jacob Farm fuller. Always love using some of his uh, some of his ideas here. Always turns out into a really beautiful piece. There we go. That was a massive amount of fun to make. Utterly fantastic fun. Really enjoyed that. This is a great project because you know you take a little more time doing it. You take a lot of care working out where all your tools go, and uh, and you end up with something that's really, really quite satisfying. Give that a little. A little more wire brushing. Does anybody have, do you mind running over to that corner and getting the practice beer bottle? Far right corner of the workshop. You know that beer bottle that we're testing bottle openers on? A little more wire brushing. Get some beautiful sheen to it. That can then be finished with beeswax or uh, linseed oil, vegetable oil. Get a nice finish on it. So now, however, I've just got to cool that off so I can grab it. And of course, we then need to test. I'm not going to open it, as much as that might be boring. Uh, but a good test. See if a, 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 a beer bottle opener will... That might be a failure. Oh, the ergonomics aren't quite there. You have to put your thumb on it. I think it needs a little more bend in it. Otherwise, it just rolls off. We've got to go back in the forge, we've got to make it right. So I'll explain what's happened. I need a little more bend out this way and a little less bend in here. I'll go close. I need a little more bend here. That needs to come this way slightly more and that needs to be a little bit straighter because what happens is, is as I talk up on this, all that wants to happen is it wants to rotate rather than lift up, which can be an issue. If you're opening your beer, it just slips off there. You could drop the beer bottle like I did, and then I caught. So I'm gonna throw that back in the fire. We gotta fix that. That's no good. Back in the fire we go. Oh, well. That gives me an opportunity to read some comments while this all heats up. Do you guys have any comments? Um, Okay, dokey. T-shirts. Good comment, T-shirts. Yes, I can actually say right now, I'm in the process of setting up a little, uh, little page on the website where you can get T-shirts, um, which is gonna be cool. Also, fun new design. You guys don't blurt out what it is. 
but first impressions of the new design, positive, bad, terrible. Oh, there we go. Back in the back in the far left corner, we heard a fantastic. fantastic. There we go. We heard an I want one. My soundboard isn't working well. I need to I need to up the volume. Here we go. We're gonna try for uh, try for I want one again. Well, there we go. The soundboard worked just then. Great. Okay, so because I'm going to be talking on this, cool that there, so we don't mar it. So what did I say? I think I wanted a little more bend here, and a little less bend there. Oh, number two. I hope I didn't just start playing the music. Oh, I did. I hope that's not been going for a long time. See how this goes, perhaps. A little, more, a little more of a aggressive shape. Man, I hope that music wasn't going for a long time. I know every time I've gone and jammed my key bad, I've been pretty close to hitting other buttons. I might have turned on the music, set one song on repeat the whole way through. That has happened. We uh, we before have turned on live shows with like an intro music and uh, had the same song loop over the entire length of the show without realizing it. Okay, now uh, a wire brush, go under the water. See what this is gonna look like, see if we have any more, any more success. Now that's a little more interesting. That's a little more interesting. Nicely fits there between those fingers. And that's a lot better. That's a lot more comfortable to use. Probably work well left-handed too. Do any left-handers here? It's good. That's very good. And also, also works left-handed in a slightly different way. But there we go. Good little test if you're making a, a bottle opener is if the bottle will hold on the uh, on the bottle opener. It's usually going to work, as you saw in my first little experiment there. First time it didn't. Uh, mostly just because of the angle of how it is that your hand was going to naturally grab on it. But there we go. There it is. There it is. So I'll give you some close-up shots there. As we give that a final brush. There we go. See where my camera is. There we go, there is the finished feather, stylized feather, leaf, whatever you want to call it. Fun use of some fun tooling, farm fuller especially. A rust on there from putting it in the water, oh I'll deal with that later. Fun, fun forging, very enjoyable work. I mean, utterly fantastic work, I mean, very enjoyable work to do something like this. Catch that in the light. Outstanding thumb. Well, thank you guys for the wonderful audience. Great. Oh, wow. I, I'm completely flattered. Thank you guys also, the wonderful audience. It's, it's great fun having you four here, but knowing that 1,400 other people are watching is like an unbelievable thing. Uh, 1,366. You guys freaking rock. Everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Tunstall is here. Tunstall is here. 67X, 7K, Nick Austin, Master Arcade, Benjamin Easter, Brent George, Stog NZ, Mark Job, Peter O'Malley, Papa Toby, The Gold, Jackie K. All of you guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had fantastic, massive fun making it. I really did. Massive, massive. It was great. Okay. I've said too many positive words in one go. Uh, I'm going to say thank you. 
I, 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 it was great having you here. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow on the next episode. Ow. Marshmallow. We're gonna make some marshmallows. I hit my hand on the anvil. Okay, we're making marshmallows. This is how we're gonna end it. We're gonna make some marshmallows. Sorry, s'mores. I apologize. Are you gonna try and move offset there? <laughs> Right, there we go, that's the finished thing. Let's work this out. I'm gonna grab the components for these more, uh, which would be, well, I need two of these. And a Hershey's chocolate, there we go. Hershey's chocolate bar, that. Are these sized to make these? Like, that's smart engineering, it fits perfectly. That's gonna go on the anvil. The anvil's actually preheating it. We have spring-loaded. Um, this is like a nightstick small roaster. Extendable, Swiss-made, no, Finnish. Finnish-made, extendable nightstick marshmallow, marshmallow toaster, small toaster. And now what I've been instructed is the, the correct technique is to, uh, is to be over here, right? And you start very gently. Now we got the forge rocking and rolling. So I'm gonna come up pretty high here. I've been instructed that you wanna have a slow heat. You want the insides to be melting first, correct? Now eventually this is gonna go all gooey on us. You can give it a shake and have a feel here. This is gonna be my second s'more. And what fun it is. Slow little rotation. I do think a cordless drill would work fantastically for this. Burning my hand on the forge. Thanks, guys. Sometimes, sometimes it takes, uh, sometimes it takes three of us to work these things out. <laughs> that was pretty. Uh, not the smartest move. Oh, I think we're preheating it nicely. I'm going to go and lower, lower the angle here. Get a little bit more direct heat. Very technical stuff. You'll notice this, uh, this small toaster is made of stainless steel. Very fancy, high-end small toaster. Um, very good. This gas forge running off propane. It does indeed make for the tastiest s'mores, am I right? I mean, you are an accredited expert. Propane gas does make the tastiest s'mores. Of course, the blacksmith forge makes for the best of everything. Because blacksmithing rocks. Give a little shake, still not there. I'm gonna lower it down. This is where it gets exciting. This is where we have a big time pressure. This is where there's no going back. We can't not make a s'more at this point. It's too stuck on, we're committed. The two will likely be stuck together, never to be taken apart, only eaten within a Hershey's chocolate bar. And what are the crackers called? Sc sc Graham crackers. Similar, they're not a digestive. They're a little more aerated than a digestive, I think. A little more porous than digestive biscuits. Oh, look at that. You see that? That is the famous wobble. We are slowly approaching temperature. What an exciting moment this is. That is the small wobble. Make sure we don't lose it now. Now we're looking for golden brown. Thank you, thank you. We're looking for golden brown. And I'm gonna be working this backwards and forwards over the forge flames. Looking for that golden brown. Here at the exit of the forge, a little more heat's coming out, so as we get to this critical moment, maybe we can better control that golden brown color. Wow, this is extremely tense stuff. I think there is some significant sweat dripping off my brow as the tension is rising right about here. Look at that wobble. That is a class, classy, classy wobble. And Oh, I think we're going to call it. I think we're going to call it. That wobble is, is going absolutely crazy. Convection currents alone are making that shing shake. Or maybe it's the nerves. It's probably just the nerves. I think it's going to fall. Should we do it? Okay, here we go. We're going to go. Time is critical at this stage. Slide it off. And now we're going to be upsetting it. Absolutely. Got a little rhombus there. 
I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to accept it. We'll crush it down. And we have a nice scale seasoning from the anvil top. You know, extend the nightstick. You kind of wish you could whoosh, whoosh, small. I'll return this back to you. Yeah. And there we go. There is the finished small. I'm going to give you a nice little close up shot of this artistic, beautiful work of culinary, culinary uh, excellence. Now, oh, goodness, again. I'm about to damage a lot of equipment today. To those of us in the British Isles, Europe, we're generally not familiar with such an incredible thing as the American s'more. I believe that term s'more because when you have one, y'all just gotta have some more. Know what I'm saying? Ain't that right? So, this is where we do it. We'll end this live show with a s'more. I'll thank you all very much. These will be my last words as I really enjoy um, what is an incredible American delicacy. Del delicacy? There we go. Delicacy. Thank you all very much. Oh god. This is not gonna go well. Okay. Hmm. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. I will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Enjoy your s'mores.